Welcome to part two with Pastor Steve Gammon. You were just kind of getting warmed up. Um, and those of you who've not seen part one will not want to, you'll just, you'll just want to go back and it lovely, absolutely wonderful and powerful. Um, but Pastor Steve, you were talking about, um, had just been diagnosed with multiple myeloma, um, this, I mean, and like severe, um, so all of a sudden you're knocked out of, um, your full-time pastorate, your community, your, um, your, your provision for your family. I mean, just, this is a bad place. It's just, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh -huh, you were relating to that one big time. Um, and so, uh, and, um, and you were sharing on caring bridge about your, um, uh, you know, what was going on and being who you are and just with the gift on your life, you couldn't help sharing what the Lord was showing you. And this was ministering to people and, and everybody said, write a book. And so I'll let you take it from there. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. That sets it up well. Yeah. Um, the hard reality is that I learned firsthand what I've seen for so many. And what we've all experienced, too, is that life isn't always easy. And, you know, you can be right smack dab in the center of God's will. Yeah. And life is miserable. That's in true. many ways. I mean, full disclosure, uh, being in the center of God's will doesn't protect. It's not doesn't mean your 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 life will be just roses and butterflies. Stuff happens. We really do live in a fallen world. And that can be very disillusioning for people who kind of have a, a mindset that if I'm in God's perfect will, everything's going to be rosy. And it's not always that way. That's precisely right. And that is what Jesus taught. That is what Jesus taught. And we are, after all, followers of Jesus. What a thought. He said, he said that in this world, you will have trouble. You will have tribulation. But he tribulation. Here, I've overcome the world. I've overcome the world. And so, but the circumstances may be hard. Yeah. And, uh, and one of the graces I've had in life is I've been able to travel and meet people who are in places where life is for them was very hard, but they're deeply yeah. in love with Jesus. And you know, right? I've met people who've, who've lost like family. They've lost like everything. They've lost, they, they, just the things that followers of Jesus have had to endure. Because this has been true since the very beginning, right. uh, since since some of the it's writers the human of, condition. of the New Testament, yes, mm -hmm. and uh, but yet, yet they have joy and contentment in the Lord. How is that possible? Right. How is it possible that in Acts sixteen you find Paul and Silas singing from while they're in chains and giving right. praise to the Lord? <laughs> Right. And they're not trying to look good or like make a statement. They no. are truly joyful. <laughs> they're, the only, they're the only Christians in town, you know, and then, and then this Philippian jailer comes and his family come to Jesus that night. You know, it's just, wow. it's just, incre it's just incredible. Um, and so speaking of Paul, uh, he, he uh, sometime later uh, wrote the letter to the Philippians to this very church that was born from him and Silas from an earthquake, <laughs> praising yeah. God in the middle of trouble. <laughs> Sometime later, he is writing a letter to that church while he is uh, in prison. And he doesn't want to be in prison. And he is he's experiencing struggle uh, and hardship and difficulty. And he writes in Philippians chapter four, but I have learned this secret. So how do you learn how do you learn what he's describing? You learn by enduring it, by going through it, by turning to the Lord in your heart. Yeah. He said, I have learned, Philippians 4.11, I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low. Right. I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. And then he tells us the secret. There it is, Philippians 4.13. I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. It is Including in having joy in the midst. Yeah. 
joy in the midst. It's in the relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so the testimony that I was sharing is that my Lord in his grace, and I see it as a grace now, believe me, I didn't see it as a grace when I got the diagnosis. Yeah. But I see it now as a grace mm -hmm. from my God to get the diagnosis of cancer that I got in October of 2018. Mm -hmm. Before that diagnosis, I was right where I wanted to be. I was back in local church life again, where I longed. I had, I, I'm a local church pastor of heart, but God keeps saying, okay, take those gifts and shepherd in this situation, in this situation. <laughs> right. you know, denominational leadership roles and, and military chaplaincy roles. In other places, God will say, lead here. After all, like we talked in the previous time, right. he's Lord, I'm not, you know? Right, right. But I long to be in local church life, and I was again, and then suddenly I wasn't. And it all was shot the smithereenies, yes. Yeah, and so the lessons that I've learned have been the same lessons Paul learned. Yeah. I've learned the secret. And it's not based on, and this is a key lesson that I, that I talk about that we have to learn, that has come out of the Lord pouring himself into me is contentment. My contentment, the Lord says, is not circumstance-based. Yeah. My contentment is relationship-based. You will find the contentment I have for you in your relationship with me, no matter what your circumstances are. You get it, Steve? And I, and if you'd asked me this at different junctures of life, I would say, got it, got it, got it. Because I've had to go, go through trials. Yeah. You've you know, been through some have. stuff, some heavy duty some, stuff. Some heavy yeah. duty pain, mm -hmm. you know, and disappointments mm -hmm. and trials and struggles. But this one, I would say, was in many ways the hardest because right. I lost so much, not gradually. But yeah. suddenly, suddenly. It was like a train wreck. What happened yeah. to my life? Yeah. What happened to uh, my health? I'm just trying to right. get up and go to the bathroom. This is my thing for the day. It's the hardest thing. Yeah. So I, yeah, it's really hard. Yeah. Right. So anyway, I like I was saying, uh, Caring Bridge, uh, this mm -hmm. website that, uh, you know, I, I was familiar with, but I experienced it firsthand. You could go to this website if you're ill. And you can post a page where you can keep people informed of how you're doing with your illness. But being a shepherd, I couldn't help it. As I was doing those posts, I was adding, this is what I'm hearing the Lord say through all of this. Because this was one, that, this was the only venue I had, but it was one where I could still be what I was in the midst of it. Because God was speaking. He was right. saying, I got you. Yeah. I'm with you. Boy. That's it's hard, it. but I'm with you. Seamless. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Hmm. I get yeah. it. You've heard that one too. Maybe once or a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I lean on it regularly. I, I, I go back there. I go, go back there on a daily basis. I have learned dependency. I have learned and I am, and I am learning. It's not like I've mastered, but yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, so anyway, thank God in his sovereignty. Uh, you know, I really thought, more than once, I thought he was going to promote me to heaven, mm -hmm. like soon. Mm -hmm. And actually, I was thrilled with that. I was absolutely <laughs> I thrilled. I vote for that. <laughs> yeah. Especially because, when you're suffering so much, too. Right. And I have seen pictures of heaven. And I, and I hear the... And I hear, the revelation of heaven yeah, right we God's long word. for it mm -hmm. and we long for it. it's not like I, I i had to get screened before i was approved for stem cell transplant one of it was part of it was psychological screening and so they all one of the questions they were asking me had to do with you know had to do with how much i was focused on death Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I think about it. I think about it all the time with anticipation. With anticipation. Um, wow. Looking forward. In the, yes. In the VA medical system, you can read your own medical records. You can read what right. people wrote. 
Right. Suicidal ideation. Right, right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, you're not, we're not tracking, but yes, I get it. No, we're up. not, we're not, we're not death focused, but we right. are heaven focused. Oh, goodness. And we just long <laughs> for face to face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So anyway, um, the Lord has walked with me through it and out of it came uh but with the encouragement of many uh sharing lessons that were learned and and that came to be uh this book where is it uh walking with god through deep valleys lessons on finding contentment yeah. when life is hard and uh because i i heard i was hearing from so many people how this i still am i still hear every single week i hear from somebody every single week I hear from somebody, often multiple people, where this stuff is powerfully speaking to them. Because so many of us are walking, we are all walking in a, and living in a broken world. But we, we know are. who to lean on. Mm -hmm. And we're feeling it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah, so so let, let me just bring you up to date on what's happened since. The, okay, so I went through stem cell transplant. Uh, mm -hmm. I am now officially thank god in remission uh, and so <laughs> i am not yes. dealing with stem, i'm not dealing with multiple myeloma right now although yes. they tell me i'm not i'm not cured because uh, there is no cure for multiple myeloma mm -hmm. uh, but our days are numbered by god i still have a compromised immune system right and i have to be careful so all of you who are wearing masks i appreciate it thank you um be careful <laughs> yeah. um, point, the point, be mindful the point of other people mm -hmm. be mindful of other people right mm -hmm. um but i don't know about you but 2020 was a hard year uh 2020 uh was a hard year because of covid 19 uh because of all the ramifications of that of our culture it was a very div divisive uh, election year in our culture. It was a very hard year for me personally because it's the year I had this, I had the stem cell transplant and then had the battle to get my energy back. Mm -hmm. So uh, the last week of 2020, okay, so we were, nobody was saying, oh, I love 2020 so much, I'd like to do it again. <laughs> so, I'll take two. <laughs> No. no, but we got to the end of we got to the end of 2020, yes. and uh, and uh, by the grace of God, I was asked. Uh, I, I asked the Lord what I've often done at the end of the year. Lord, how do you want me to approach my quiet time with you, my devotional life with you in 2021? Mm -hmm. The only specific guidance for me, because I always love it. I love the fact that we can have a personal relationship with the living God mm -hmm. and we can take time to be with him. Right. So good. So I asked the Lord this question and the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and gave me a specific assignment. Again, my God is Lord, I'm not. And we take orders from him. He gave me an assignment and, and it, it was laid on my heart. This year, 2021, I want you to listen. I want you to write. I want you to write a devotional book with a daily devotion this year in 2021. Nice. And uh, and I knew how it was how it was supposed to be. Uh, I knew how it was supposed to be fleshed out and how it was supposed to be designed. It was supposed to be because God I can. Mm. Uh, because God I can. And uh, subtitled Twelve Themes on Following Jesus. And so that there it is. Yeah, and it's a it's a year long daily devotional with a reading mm -hmm. for every day, and each month there's a different theme. Now, K Catherine, I got a question for you. Could you imagine having the Lord living in your home and walking with you all through your life journey, every single day, everywhere you go? You're never going to be apart from Him. Could you imagine that and not bothering? to talk with him or listen to him or, or enjoy his presence. It is, I mean, it, it is mind boggling, but we do it, right? I mean, we do as as not necessarily you and I, but I mean, um, but we do it, we get distracted, we get busy, we get whatever. And wow, we need, that's our life source. Yeah. 
Absolutely. 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 And I guess, my Lord, again, I, and I've shared before the last time that we talked about the joyful blessing I had, even when I was young, to enjoy that quiet time with the Lord each day. And so let me just give you the, 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 high, the high top so that you can get a vision of, of why I think it's important to do this every day. It, it is such an invitation to our Lord again from the beginning when he said to, to Simon and Andrew and James and John and Levi and others, follow me. He is saying to us, follow me, enjoy life with me. And we can. We can because God, because God what? Because God invites us. I mean, that's where it starts, because God is God, and God invites us into personal relationship with him. Let's make it personal. You put your name. God invites you yes. into personal relationship with him. You can, because God. Because God, because of who he is, because God speaks, because God acts and reveals and empowers and loves, because God is with you today. Mm -hmm. He will be with you today in everything you're facing today mm -hmm. and tomorrow, because God, you can, you can what? I already mentioned Philippians 4, 13, which says, because God, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Right. And Holy Spirit laid on me 12 specific things that all who follow Jesus Christ can do. And each of these is a month-long theme in this year-long devotional with a short devotion each day focused on that theme. But because God, I can, and I, I can get excited about each of these, because God, I can believe. Mm -hmm. I can believe. I can believe. Now, here's the thing about, about believe. Those who believe are those who are seeking for truth. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus said this, one of my favorite verses, Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given you, seek and you will find. Mm -hmm. Knock and the door will be opened to you for everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds, and to whom who knocks, the door will be open. I met a guy over in North Macedonia who told me that he had been Muslim, always Muslim. He was a seeker of truth. Mm -hmm. And in his dream, Jesus Christ came to him, revealed himself to him, and he became a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus reveals himself to those who are seeking truth. The Gospels are told are filled with people who, post-resurrection, who knew that Jesus had died on that cross, mm -hmm. longed for truth, longed for Jesus. And so you have Mary Magdalene, you have you have all the apostles, and then you have Thomas and others who said, we have seen the Lord. They believed. And so we can believe because we long for truth and God reveals himself to us. Mm -hmm. Well, the, another one that I really get excited about is because God I can trust. Oh. To trust is to rely on the character and strength and truth of God. We can trust him. And why can we trust him? Because God has shown himself faithful to us yeah. uh, i told you i mentioned about the call that happened after 9 11 9 11 was such a horrific day the church that i was serving in new hampshire on that wednesday night october 3rd i think it was we were having a worship service and i was on my face i was prostrate before god mm -hmm. and the holy spirit was saying to me very clearly steve gammon do you trust me? And, you know, I said, yes, Lord. I walked with you a long time. But you've shown yourself faithful. Holy Spirit came back. Do you really trust me? Mm -hmm. And I was bothered. Yes, Lord, I, I really I, trust you. I think you. so. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, it, it, so I, now starting to come to mind Peter's frustration when right. the Lord said, do you love you me? Love do you really me? love me? Because then yeah. I... Like, then it was a future oriented question will you trust me mm -hmm. will you trust me and and with tears I, I didn't know what it meant yes lord no matter what comes i am going to trust you have shown yourself reliable to me yes i'm going to trust you wow and i found out an hour after i got home why out of the blue phone call the tin commander again 
speaking. You're recalled to active duty, you're required to report within 24 hours. A big deal. And I was called up for a year with no notice whatsoever, but the <laughs> Lord had notice. Yeah, the Lord had notice. The Lord knows yeah. what's coming. He knows what's coming, doesn't he? And he takes care of the details. Yeah, Brian was on an aircraft carrier at the time and was was on his way home and then had to turn around. So I I, I get it. That was a big trust. Yeah. It's it's a big trust. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and so the Lord just says to me, and so trust essentially is hold on to my reliability. Yeah. And so it is good for us to hit the pause button now and then and reflect on the reliability of God. And so what does that mean for me as I face my current circumstance? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my trusting you now, Lord, in this situation, yeah. whether you're dealing with cancer, whether you're dealing, whatever you're dealing with. So because God, I can believe, because God, I can trust. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can go through all of these. I only just hit a couple of them. Because God, I can receive. Oh, receive. Mm -hmm. To receive is, is to be given, presented, awarded something. Mm -hmm. Something that now becomes ours. Mm -hmm. We gain it. We accept it as our own. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that God has offered to us so much. And the greatest gift he's offered, of course, is his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and love, his love, his everlasting life through the perfect sacrifice of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But like with every other gift, we got to receive it. Yeah. We have to, in faith, receive it. John mm -hmm. 1, 11 and 12 says that. He came to his own. His own did not receive him. him. Yeah. But to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. We have to hit the pause button of our heart to reflect on it. What has God offered to me? Am I fully receiving it? Mm. It's good yeah. for us to pause and, and reflect on that. Mm -hmm. uh, Another one that I just love to reflect on, we need to live this way all the time, is to pray. You know, we can pray, and we do pray. Mm -hmm. we, we need to pray mm -hmm. as a way of life. Mm -hmm. No way. Um, and that to pray is to converse and commune with the Almighty. That's all about relationship. It is all about relationship. That is back and, and so forth. It is, mm -hmm. That's right. Is mm -hmm. back and forth. It is not only listening. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not only talking. It's listening to, mm -hmm. and to whatever is on God's heart. And here's a key thing that I've learned about prayer: that prayer is not so much a cry for what God might give to us, mm -hmm. as it is a cry for God Himself. Yes, which is everything, <laughs> right? You know, yeah. Wow. If, so if we see. if we focus only on what God can give us, we're missing on the best on the biggest treasure. Mm -hmm. Prayer is not so much a cry for what God might give to us as it is a cry for God Himself. Oh, and so we good. need to enjoy that's that really good. that privilege. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then praise, which is uh, affirmation, approval. I, it, the image of praise that I love that keeps coming to mind is praising God flows out of a heart of adoration. Mm -hmm. It's like holding a mirror in the sun, <laughs> reflecting the light back to the source, mm -hmm. yeah. back to the glory of God. It shifts our focus from ourselves and our many distractions and disappointments and heartaches to the Holy One, to God himself, and to the greatness we, of who God and is. And we need it. It's not like God needs us to fluff and buff his ego. No, we need right. it. Because we need to remember who is this person who's actually in us? Who is this person? Oh my goodness, he's this and he's this and you're this and you're this and you're this. And all of a sudden you start to transcend because you're focusing on the one who is transcendent, right? Who transcends all I things. I love it. I love right? it. And I love it. Well it's said. about that and relationship. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's well said. And that's why, that's, that's why. I still am marvel at, at Paul and Silas right. having been beaten, right. having been chained, and they're praising God in the right. midst of it. And and when I have done that, I have found myself doing that at times in out. misery. 
and it does it it yeah and god inhabits the praises of his people and it goes it's counterintuitive to praise god when oh life is it's a lot of times the last thing you want to do <laughs> <laughs> you want to complain and well god how could you let this happen and it's like wait a second god's not the problem yeah uh but yeah and 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 we're we're needing that so it is a discipline sometimes we really need to do because it gets us out of ourselves and focused on the one who like pulls us into the reality of who he is and as sons and daughters of god pulls us out of of the circumstance and we're able to look down on the circumstance and that's where we get creative uh, that's where our faith is effectual because we're connecting with love and faith works by love but that's where we also get the 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 leadings of how we're going to get out of our predicaments or the strength we need or the wisdom and insight we need or maybe we just need to the strength to maybe go minister. You're talking about ministering to people in the hospital, right? That you, when you were in the hospital, um, yes. all of that, and it, it causes us, avails us of wait, wait a second. This is not what I'm experiencing now is not the be all end all of everything. No, I'm one with the one who loved me and gave himself up for me. And I love it. I love it. it towards him. That mm -hmm absolutely absolutely it, mm -hmm. it, it is good for us to pause because sometimes these things which are part of following jesus we know that we can do them mm -hmm. but let's be honest we don't or we don't to the extent that we can yeah. and so god says yes yes you can mm -hmm. yes you can and so he's discipling us he is discipling okay. us as long as we are walking on this side of eternity he's discipling us to make us more like jesus and these are all part of it of course love is love is probably the key one you just you just talk about you just mentioned it love you know, love love is jesus says i want you to love like i've loved you and right greater love is no one no one than one who would lay down his life for another and that's what jesus did uh for us and what he calls us to do so we can love because we have been loved like absolutely. that. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and we're called to one do of that the, as sons and daughters. We look just like him, right? So we're called to, we're being conformed in his image. He's it's the image of God who is love. And so that's what, that's our highest goal. The new commandment I give you, right? That you love as I have loved. And that's supernatural. We can't do it apart from him, but we're not apart from him. And so, right? And so we're, we're called to operate out of that 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 greater truth yeah and one of the things that motivates us to want to do that is to internalize that we have been loved yeah we have to internalize it and a lot of us you know, we've all experienced times when we haven't felt so loved and our father in heaven loves us so much and is continually reminding us oh you have you are loved so much mm -hmm. um, one of the illustrations i use in one of the devotions i think it's in the month of june where the whole month of, is focused on this on devotions on love is uh, a century ago this guy in uh, that was the uh, prime minister of great britain was david lord george david lloyd george and the story's told about when he was an infant uh, his mother god bless her uh was carrying her infant son uh, across uh, a journey in uh, south wales and a blizzard came up and the blizzard uh overtook them and that young mom never reached her destination uh but later uh, searchers found her lifeless body and that baby was snuggled beneath her body with all of her outer clothing and scarf and everything wrapped around that baby Oh, wow. And so he lived because of the sacrificial love of his mom. And I, that, illust that illustration and others, you know, that come out of wartime and so on, where folks will throw themselves on a hand grenade to save the lives of others. These sort of things, the Holy Spirit uses to say to us, that is how I have loved you. You are loved enough to give my best for you. Mm -hmm. And when we internalize that, Jesus told us it is going to stir you to love others. You can love because you are loved like that. Uh, wow. Powerful, powerful. 
And the more yeah, we track with that, yeah. the more it flows seamlessly. Sorry, you just kind of hit my hot button, but I, I'll, I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll let you continue because I might run away with things. <laughs> I'm trying to hold it in. No, no. So well, keep yes. loving, keep loving, yeah. keep yeah. loving because you're keep you're gonna you, you love we love so much okay. we love so much so much and okay so I'm gonna touch on listening. We, I have a whole month that focuses on the on devotions on listening, which is okay. paying attention. I mean, that's clearly listening is paying attention. That's By the way, I'm hearing here I'm wearing hearing aids right now. Um, and my wife tells me sometimes, you're not hearing, wearing your hearing aids, are you? And she says, I don't hear them when I don't want to hear. I'm not wearing them when I don't want to hear. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes, let's be honest, you don't want to hear. Like, Okay. Wow, 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 I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but sometimes, let's be honest, we don't really want to hear what God has to say. No, it's no sense. No, we don't. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is us. And because we're nervous, we're nervous about what it is, and so exactly. listening to God, we need to hit the pause button and reflect on what that means because it requires an intentionality. It requires focus. It requires believing that we need to hear what God has to say. Right. Yeah. It's it's. It's turning down distractions to receive what God is saying now. And that needs to be a life or a lifestyle for us. We have to turn off distractions because there's too many. Uh, one, of the, um, one of the concepts that I mentioned, one of the devotion is one that has come to my attention called inattentional blindness. Uh, there's a devotion in there on inattentional wow. blindness, which, which is failing to perceive an unexpected stimulus in plain sight. Wow. Failing to perceive Ooh. an unexpected stimulus in plain sight. We're, we're getting nailed lack, today. Yes, go ahead. It's good. Yes. Good press. Nail us. Because, of a, Nail us. because yeah. of a lack of attention, right? <laughs> and so one of the studies that we've done, uh, it, money was clipped on a tree branch across a walking trail about head height. Oh. And 400 people walked by and only 94% and didn't notice the money wow. because their attention was elsewhere. Right. And so that that kind of spoke to my heart in that that we need i need you need we all need intentional quiet time that's good mm -hmm. with our lord to proactively pay attention and listen to see and notice what god is saying that's good. to us that's good and that is a discipline we need to discipline ourselves with that yeah that's good quiet time helps it's it's and so i usually start by lord clear me of the distractions and now my mind is scattered clear me i want to hone in give me ears to hear what the holy spirit is saying that prayer is is always helpful so we need to listen we also need to rest uh, and that one there is probably of all the 12 that i focus on in this devotion i would say it's the hardest one for me <laughs> because because i'm driven and many of us are driven uh ceasing from our you too <laughs> yeah just ceasing from yeah. work from striving it's hard mm -hmm. sure uh, and it's and we need to choose to relax and to refresh and to recover strength and it's interesting to know that our lord commanded us this is one of his first commandments to us is to do this is to rest yeah. um and he did it. Genesis 2, 1 to 3, as you know, the, the creation story concludes with, uh, with our God uh, resting. It says he rested on the seventh day, which clearly is not because he was exhausted, but because he wanted, as it were, to hit the pause button to reflect on the purpose of it all. And what is the purpose of it all? To glorify God. It's all for the glory of God. And it's interesting to note that in the account of all of the days of creation, this is the only one, the only day that, that does not end with the words, and there was evening, and there was morning, and then the end of that day, which implies then that the seventh day really isn't over. There is still this need for us to rest and to reflect on the purpose of it all, which is for the, for the ultimately for the glory of God. And if we're just go, 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 which many of us are, and we don't hit the pause button, then we're missing out. And, and uh, we need to find a rest in him.
That's so good. Wow. So those are each each a month long focus. Yeah. In your yeah. And then, because yeah. And then, God, I can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the other ones, just to mention them, are to testify, mm -hmm. and by the way, which is to tell of what we know, and we're all called to bear witness and to serve. The essence of serving is that to serve is the essence of following Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, to give, which is uh, to freely transfer possession of, of something to someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's freely supplying what we have received to others. And the hope, uh, which by the way, biblical hope is not wishful thinking. It is confident yeah. expectation. Uh, and biblical hope, by the way, is a good thing for Advent because it's all about God keeping his promises. And, uh, and it's, a it's a fitting thing for Advent as we hold on to the promises of God. Okay. His first coming, which is fulfilled, but also his second coming, which we hold on to in faith. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's. Wow. Wow. The, the relationship that is ours of walking with Jesus. Uh, I just I just thank God that I've been able to do it now for six decades. And I don't know how many more years I got, but I'm going to walk with the Lord as many as I got. And then forever. keep walking the other side of eternity. We get to walk. Right. It's, it's an eternal Amen. thing. Isn't that gorgeous? Amen. I love, I love it. Oh my goodness. Well, so gorgeous. Um, you guys will want to check out uh, Stephen's uh, resources. I am sharing the links. Um, take advantage of the free downloads, but please, 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 please um, uh, buy, purchase, support Stephen, right? And and what he's doing and, and get the beautiful hard copies in your hands uh, to enjoy um, but wow. Well, this has been so rich. It's meant, I cannot tell you how much this has meant for me personally. It's like a, a full circle. Um, and isn't that just beautiful, right? Isn't that beautiful? Thank you. It's, it is beautiful. And I, I, we knew each other, uh, many years ago mm -hmm. and our father in heaven has walked with us along the way. And now right. we've connected again. So and, uh, uh, and here's the beauty is that we are forever family. Isn't that great? I mean, that is, I mean, that is such hope that that transcends death, that transcends distance, that transcends difficulty. Um, I mean, that is, that's a, such a beautiful thing, such a beautiful reality. And I love that. Perhaps if it's okay, I'd like to maybe just conclude by, I mean, this is kind of a testimony in itself by telling everyone my, uh, the name of my website where you can please find information on all three books but yes. also where you can make contact with me uh it's walkingwithgodforlife.com mm -hmm. just reflect on that for a moment because that is the privilege that is ours to walk walking with god for life mm -hmm. dot com and for life is eternal as you just pointed out it is right. eternal Right. walkingwithgodforlife.com and if you want to send me a personal message about anything you've heard today or question about any of the book or you know some people sometimes want to find ways to get cheaper prices on bulk orders or whatever just mm -hmm. let me know but my uh, email address is steve at walkingwithgodforlife.com it's been a joy to be with you Catherine and I uh, pray God's continued blessings on you and your family and ministry and and on all your, all your listeners, we're forever family, and we get to walk with God for life. What a privilege that is. Yay. Oh, my goodness. Such a privilege. Well, thank you so much for joining. Please connect with Steve. Uh, support him. And thank you, Stephen. Um, I hope I can have you back. Uh, and and you're, started, you're thinking of starting another podcast. So, boy, that would be a thing. So, Grace, Grace I'm on that. I'm about that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Excited. Wonderful. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, give my love to Helen. And um, and we will we will definitely keep in touch.